Here's Pete, once again. Evening. Working on the big bike. All in pieces. The back half of this bike has just disappeared. Uh, it's, it's here somewhere. So what are you up to, Pete? Well, just trying to get rid of some corrosion, the old corrosion. Uh, it's done quite a big trip, so I uh, just want to pull it apart, make sure there's no damage, uh, give it a good old clean up so that when it goes back together it's all pucker for the next, I don't know, year or two. They're having to worry about it, hopefully. So There's Trent's over there just uh, hey. <laughs> catching so us got, on the other camera. The, uh, we've got the swing arm out, we're going to do the bearings on that, just give them a good old grease up, hopefully they'll be in okay shape. If they're not, we'll have to replace them. Then you've got to get all the, all the um, subframe back on, that needs to clean up. This is the leak pipe that goes between the headers and the exhaust. You can see that it's mightily corroded. Oh, it's cactus, isn't it? Uh, luckily, I have a friend who has a spare one who's kindly donated it to the cause, which is good. Um, yeah, I thought, I mean, I thought these were stainless, but obviously not. And um, this was one area where the salt really got jammed in and we just couldn't get it out. When you went riding across this salt yeah, lake? Yeah, across the salt lake. It's just, it was just, yeah. Where was that? It was in Bolivia. In Bolivia. Yeah. What's that called? The Salad de Uni. Right. And we'd, we'd been arrived, we'd been, Trent and I were there, it was, what, it was four bikes, and we had one big truck with us as well, a 1976 United Nations ambulance that these guys had ridden, driven, I should say, from London to uh, Australia, and then shipped to South America. So they, they were carrying a lot of our gear, which is quite nice. Um, but we got to the salt flats, and we weren't sure what the situation was going to be. And uh, we eventually got on there, and there was sort of this deep in, in, in salt water. And we thought it would be dry as you sort of get towards the islands. Unfortunately, it wasn't. It was that deep the whole way across. <laughs> there was one German man with us as well, an Africa twin, and he uh, had a good sense not to not to uh, come on the salt flats, therefore avoiding all of this kind of stuff. However, I have to say that it was one of the most amazing experiences riding across there. It was really, really cool. Um, I had to tow my friend's bike for about 15 kilometres the first day. And then Trent spent about five or six hours that night and the next morning trying to find an electrical fault, which uh, we finally did. And uh, he finally did, I should say. And um, yeah, it was quite a challenge coming off, off those salt flats because all the four wheel drives had churned the water up, all the yeah. surface up so much. It was about this deep. So as a result, you've got stuff Lots like of work this. To do. Lots of work to do. So here's the swing arm off the big beast. And Trent's just doing a, some, the cosmetic work. Yeah, pretty much. Just giving Pete a bit of a hand to... Uh, so I've seen how you thing. fellas do this. You just use WD-40 to clean things. Yeah, yeah. Um, why not do why not would be really nice, but, well, yeah, if you've got some. <laughs> <laughs> that would be great. Um, WD-40 seems to work quite well with the, um, you know, just the loose sort of softish grease that comes on the swing arms and stuff. So you've got one of the bushes out now of the swing arm. Yes, oh, I can see the You can see the needle roller needle bearings. And they're ones that start, some of them just drop out when you pull the... True. On the elephant they do that, <laughs> which is wonderful <laughs> counting all those tiny little fraction of a matchstick size bloody bearings. Yeah, those you ones. You count them all out, you count them all back <laughs> in again. I think those ones, they don't actually have a cage, do they? They just all oh. sit in the extern and the outside. Yeah sort of casing and, and you've got usually to put them back there's in. a small <laughs> gap which is kind of thinking does another one go in there or does it not? Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't. There's always a small gap. Uh, this is supposedly special motorcycling well, silkaline. It's ex extra uh, waterproof yeah, I agree yeah, as yeah. opposed to standard. Right. Uh, supposedly the water won't wash it away and yeah. um, anyway. everyone says red grease is better than normal grease so yeah. Because you can uh, tell when it gets dirty, it's not red anymore. True enough, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so basically, I'm just taking big fingerfuls and I'm just feeding it inside the bearing and just squashing it down uh, into the rollers. So it's squeezing down inside the rollers and going around to the outside. Yeah. Uh, turn them around a bit to get the grease sort of flowing around, and you see it's all. You just keep packing it in. How long yeah, do you till you get sick of doing it, or? Uh, until it just won't go in anymore. I mean, that's. I've done a couple of fingerfuls now. We'll stick another one in, and um, you'll probably find that this one here won't um, won't go in very much. Yeah. By the time I take my finger out, you'll see there's still quite a lot comes out with my finger. So yeah. 
Uh, I'd say it's pretty... Not pop, you know, come up in your hands and sort of pop out sometimes. That's yeah, we actually about. were discussing this uh, just earlier. Um, some of them do, yes, they're all loose and... Uh, these are caged these, ones. These Yours are on your bike are caged ones too, aren't they? they yeah. But the little individual needles yeah, don't yeah. come out there. Well, they should have, but they, they can. Yeah, if, yeah. The, if the cage is rooted. Well, no, if you just kind of get it off centre, you can not dislodge them. Yeah, yeah. These are actually quite big Munty bearings, actually, uh, surprisingly. So, big what are bearings? Munty. <laughs> uh, quite tough and strong bearings. So obviously, quite a big bike, so they need to be quite strong. And I'd say you'd be hard pushed to do these, uh, a lot of damage. Yeah. Should be easy to slide it on in there, then. <laughs> Oh, oh Rich, Rich, Richard's punking out. He wants Trent to put his clutch cover back on for him. I, I, who was the bloke who actually got that off? I just can't quite recall. The fellow who, you know, oh, was. everyone was. else. Do you want to go trying to put it back on? The clutch cover coming off wasn't the big problem. I was getting that the oil pipe out of the way. That's going back on today. <laughs> uh, is that going back on? Yeah, I, I thought we were replacing it with something. I rung the guy, and the, the bloke who made the replacement part has moved on, and they've lost, they don't have any record of the parts. Oh, oh clowns. And I haven't got time and energy to sort it out, so. So that part goes back on. Oh well. Right. Any tricks? Trent? Yes. One trick that you want to be watching out for is this nice bit here in the middle that turns. What is that? Uh, it's it's kind of like a gear. It connects in into the inside of the clutch cover. So when the when that shaft turns, it pulls on these teeth here and engages oh, the clutch. Oh, disengages the clutch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. engages the clutch. Engages. <laughs> which? What do you you mean? Engages as in? And it separates all the plates. Yeah. And when so you disengage no the clutch, the plates all join back together and it drives the wheel. Right. Most people would think that's the other way around. They would, wouldn't they? You being a bike mechanic. <laughs> Here in the workshop with the front wheel that's going to be going on my bike. Twin disc, 19 inch front end, front wheel. That we need to get the tyre off. So basically we can refurbish this hub, clean the discs up, which are really grotty, and also put some new spoke nipples which are what hold the spoke to the rim because they're just rusty basically and buggered and I just wouldn't feel good about it. Pete guilted me into it. Pete said no it was you got to fix that before you put it on the bike so but the problem we've got is getting the tyre off so that we can work on the wheel. Trent was explaining to me the uh, the bead the breaking of the bead. Yeah it's uh Obviously, in tyre shops, they have special machines to, to break the bead of a tyre. The bead is the steel, uh, the steel part of the tyre with steel beads and um, it's like steel wire, loads and loads of steel wire that run around the, uh, the circumference of the tyre, and it just uh, seats up against, right up against this edge, all the way around. Obviously, on the inside of the rim, right the way around the inside. If you if this was a motocross wheel, you could just slide on the ground. You could push down on there, and the beads would break, poof, straight off. These are a bit more difficult. Um, obviously, a tyre shop has a special tool to push the beads off. But if you've got another if bike handy, yeah, if you've got another bike handy, if you're travelling with another person, uh, you can lie the the rim, the wheel on the ground like this. Use the side stand of the other bike to to sit on the edge of the tyre and just pull the weight of the bike onto the side stand. It pushes down on the tyre and it breaks. Uh, starts starts breaking the bead and then you can carry on. Uh, with your feet to to break the rest of it. Just to stand on it. And uh, we haven't got that tonight, so no. <laughs> we've come up with a... Since we're not going to be using this tyre again, we've come up with an interim solution, which is try and break the bead <laughs> using the vice. There we go. Look at that. So that's popped so off. Now that's popped off the bead. Off the rim. Does it make a noise or you can just tell by No, it? it's just, you can just, you get a sense for You can see the gap. It's separated away from yeah. the... Yeah, there it goes. So we're just all pushing right. it off all the way around. So there you go, the beads are now broken. Both sides, the tire is sitting off. So just removing the, the nut from the valve stem. On the tube there's quite a thick piece of rubber right around the the valve stem. Um, if you're trying to push the beads down and they, they get onto this thick piece of rubber, they don't push in properly. So right. if you push the valve back up inside, the beads can then get down right. inside properly. 
that's that's the plan of that. Okay, now, so these uh, rinky dink tie levers. <laughs> smallest tie levers I've ever seen. Uh, not really ideal for these quite thick tires. These mm. are more like motocross enduro type tire levers. Typically what you would do is start reasonably close together, pull the tire off the bead. Obviously with two, you're kind of stuck then. You've got to take one back out. And when you take it back out, often the tire will pop back in. So if you've got three, you can put three all in at once, pull them all across, and then you can take the middle one back out and move it around. Right. And then carry so on. So we're, we're, we're going to use this whopping great screwdriver as our sort of placeholder are we? Yeah, it's not ideal, Obviously you can see the, the thickness or the width of a tyre lever is much much wider than a screwdriver so uh, the screwdriver can quite easily damage the rim when you're levering it. Right. Now I don't know how worried you are about the tube, uh, obviously if this was your own bike and you were wanting to use the tube again you want to be quite careful when you're putting the tyre levers in because you can easily pinch the tube, obviously pinching it, putting little holes in it. Snake bites, they're commonly called, uh, which renders the tube useless. That's another good move, isn't it? You put a split piece of garden hose over the rim to give you a sort of a pivot point for the tire lever, so you're not grinding away at the rim with that lever. You're basically just protecting it. There you go. So now that's freed up our middle tire lever. All right. So hopefully we can put that in somewhere else. What a bastard of a job. Imagine how much fun this is on the side of the road. 40 degree heat in India. Hundreds of people standing around watching. <laughs> Alright, so that's magic. So, that's half the tire off. Now, obviously, if you've got a puncture, that's more or less all you need to do. You don't usually need to take the tire all the way off. Uh, from there, you can just pull the tube out the inside. Now, what, if you did have a puncture, what you would normally do, you can lay it like this, put a bit of air back in the tube, you'll find out where the leak is, match that up to where the tyre is, oh look, there's a big nail on the tyre, pull that out, put a patch on the tube, put it all back together. Mm. Or if, you had, if it was really slow leak, you could pump the tube up and put it in some water, couldn't you, and just, just sort of roll the tube in the water yeah, yeah, exactly to find right the, to figure out but you usually out. won't get those small bicycle sized leaks on a motorbike tire, yeah. will you? Sometimes you may find, you know, you'll get a small crack in the, in the rubber here, uh, you may put the tube in a, you've got a flat tire, you put the tube in the water and you still can't see where it's coming from, yeah. check the valve is not leaking, there's no bubbles coming out of the valve, and also check, just give the valve a bit of a tweak sideways on each side, uh, just to make sure there's no air coming out from the from the corners. Yeah. Unfortunately, if it is, you're pretty much stuffed because there's not not much you can do to fix it. But those. you were carrying a spare tube, weren't you? We carried lots of spare tubes, <laughs> <laughs> many many spare tubes. So tube off, and uh, installation would be the reverse, wouldn't it? You'd just slightly inflate it. Yeah. Feed it back in under the rim. Yeah. Making sure that you've got the valve stem aligned with this with its hole. Yeah, exactly right. And on a bike like this, you're going to have to lever that that back on then, aren't you? Being exactly careful. Right. Yeah, Whereas yeah. on a dirt bike, you could just probably stomp it back on. Yeah, you can more or less stomp them on with a dirt bike. You might need to leave the last a little bit. But... Pete's plugging away with his KTM 950, getting rid of corrosion and lubricating things and. Are you at the putting things backstage or still I taking kind of them off? Have, yeah, maybe I should have waited a little bit. No, I'm going to get this back on. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now Richard, water pump fixed, side cover back on, troublesome oil line, no longer so daunting. <laughs> Alright Pete, so we'll see you next time on 
Gary Trump. Yeah.